In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the new features within Studio One 5.1. It's been out for a little while now, but I still would like to go over some of these because there is some cool stuff that's been included. And before we get started, if you're someone who is interested in one-on-one -on -one training for Studio One, or you are finding the tutorials helpful and would like to contribute to the channel, just check out the description below this video. Now with that, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the uh, global track view button. And actually I believe this was introduced in five, but this ties in with something that was released in 5.1. So up at the top here, we have this global track visibility button. So when our track column is at a certain width, our global track controls are gonna be hidden within this. So if we click down, then we can see our ruler, marker, arranger, chords, things that most of us are probably familiar with. If I were to hover at the border here and pull this out, then we can see that they pop up there. So if they've disappeared on you and you're wondering what's going on, that is where they are. Let's pull that back to as it was. Now within this, we do have a new ruler option and this is going to allow you to have a secondary ruler. Uh, up above here or below our main ruler. So if we just click once to activate that, we can see there is now a second ruler. We have the option to change the format here in the drop down menu. So we can choose samples, bars, which the main ruler is already set to. We can choose frames. We can also choose that by right clicking on that secondary ruler and then coming here. I'll change that to seconds. And we could also, if we did not open up the ruler from this area and we can hide it or close it by clicking again, we can right click on the main ruler and then come down to the bottom, open secondary ruler, just click once on that and that's gonna open it up as well. And we can come to the sub menu here and choose the format that we would like. Let's right click and click once to take that out of there. Now also some of these global track controls are available within the edit windows. So let's double click on this audio event and we can see we have this same button here. So if I click on that, we have four of the six that are available, our marker, arranger, chords, and signature. So we can again, click once to activate that and then come back and click again to hide it. As up above, we can right click and uh, choose from here also, clicking again, we can take it out of there. Now the secondary ruler is only available in the main arrange view. And these global track controls will be available within the MIDI or instrument editor as well. So if I double click on this MIDI part or click once to make that active down below, we can see our button is there and right clicking, we can choose here. Now also within the ruler, we have the option when we right click to enable play start marker. So wherever we set our playback cursor to and then right click and enable play start marker, you notice we have this green triangle. So our playback is always gonna begin from this marker no matter where our cursor is set. So if I set at the beginning of bar five and then press the space bar to begin playback, we start here. If I set the cursor to bar eight, press the space bar, we start from here. So this is another option that is available. We can come back here and just click once to disable that feature. If we come to the upper left corner and open up the track list, we now have a search and filter feature down at the bottom. If I were to click here and type in drums, then we can see Everything else is hidden besides our drum track. We can click on the X to close that out. If I would like to see our guitar, then we can type that in, close here. Let's close the track list by clicking there and open up the mix console so we can see we have the same feature here within the console. So clicking once, I can type in pad to show our synth with a pad on it. And again, clicking the X. And I actually did a detailed tutorial on this feature. So I will leave a link in the upper right hand corner if you would like to check that out more in depth. 
And in that tutorial, I cover a lot of different ways that you can go about managing your tracks and channels and visibility settings within Studio One 5.1. Let's close the mix console and take a look at the next feature. Now we have gain envelopes that were introduced in version five, and I actually have done an in-depth tutorial on that as well. So again, there will be a link up above if you'd like to check that out. But uh, in 5.1, we have the ability to bypass the gain envelope. So if we take this audio event here and then right click, we can activate the gain envelope by clicking here. We can see we now have this horizontal white line through the center of our event, we can click once to add points to this event. I'll come back to the center point, click hold and drag that down. And we now have an envelope for our gain on this event. So now with version 5.1, we do have the option to bypass this if we would like to uh, deactivate that without removing it. So right clicking on the event, we can see the bypass button here, clicking once, and that's now been bypassed. I'll click again to reactivate and then select this point, press delete, delete and delete. And let's right click again to deactivate the gain envelope. Now, another feature that a lot of people have been asking for for quite some time is retrospective recording. And I've also done a tutorial for that, an in-depth tutorial. So we'll just briefly take a look at that here. I have a Mai Tai on this track here, and this feature is only gonna work with MIDI. So wherever you put your cursor, and if I were to use my controller to play the instrument here, we can then come to the inspector by clicking on the I there, and we see this red button. This Initially, this is gonna be gray, but after you play a few notes, it turns red, and then we can click on that to uh, show or add to our arrange view, our song, the MIDI information that was captured with this retrospective recording feature. And again, if you want more details on that, it, it seems uh, very straightforward, but there's actually a few things uh, that are good to know in that in-depth tutorial that I created. Let's select that and delete and close our inspector. Next, we'll take a look at the score editor and the score editor was introduced in version five, but in 5.1, we now have score printing available. So if I double click on this MIDI part to open up our editor, and then let's change that to the score editor by coming in the upper left hand corner and clicking there. And we can see that we now have the ability to print our scores. So that one is pretty straightforward. And there's also been the addition of some other features to the score editor, but I will put together an in-depth tutorial on cover, covering everything you need to know about the uh, score view and score editor. Let's switch this back to the piano view and close our editor. Now a cool change has been made to patterns and impact on this track here. Drums, I have an impact loaded up and this is a pattern here as it's labeled at the top, so when we double click on this, we're taken to the pattern editor. And if you notice anything different here, these events used to be orange and now these have been colorized to match the color of our pads on impact. Let's open up that impact again. And so this is our kick. If I were to come to the upper corner here and click and change our pad color, let me choose something pretty bright this red, then we can see that our events have changed to reflect uh, what we've chosen here. So this is gonna help you better identify uh, maybe a bit more quickly the uh, patterns that you're working with. Let's come back to the mix console and on our instrument panel, we have a new compact and extended view option. These couple of buttons here, by default, this is gonna be in the compact mode and it just looks the same as it has always looked. If we click on the extended, then we can now see the actual preset that's being used by the VST instruments within our song. If you're someone who records guitar and you make use of the Empire, we now have a couple of new pedals. So on this track, I've got a guitar part 
let's click on the eye to open up the inspector and double click to open up our empire. Now, if we come down below here to add a new petal and click on that down arrow, then we can see a selection of all the different petals that are available. And th the recent additions are the compressor here and the gate. So these are two new um, petals that are available for our empire. And I'm going to actually pin this so that it will stay open at the top here and come to the next track where I have a pedal board loaded in the inserts and double click on that so we can have these both open at the same time. I'll go ahead and pin that as well. Another feature that's been added in 5.1 is we have the ability to drag pedals from Empire to the pedal board. So if we've made some changes and some settings that we really like, and we'd like to uh, bring those over directly to the pedal board, we can click hold and drag that over like so. And to finish up, we will come back to the track list here. And down at the very bottom, we have this button with, the, with an ellipsis on it. And this provides us with new visibility commands. So if we click once on this, we can see we have a variety of options that are gonna help us manage what we're seeing in the track column. So show all tracks, show selected tracks. These are pretty straightforward, hide empty tracks. So this track with the pedal board on it doesn't have any events on it. So if we'd like to hide any tracks that are empty, we could click on that as an example. If we would like to undo that visibility change, we can click down at the bottom. Okay, I did something wrong there. Uh, anyhow, so you can see what's available here, pretty straightforward. And this is the bulk of the new features. There are some, a few other things, but you can always check out the release notes for those. There were, were a lot of fixes uh, also in that release. And with that, we will wrap up this tutorial. Thanks for watching.